All right. Good afternoon once again. Uh, this is Dave Nadler with the National Weather Service in Peachtree City. Uh, going to uh, go ahead with our uh, special weather briefing on this uh, winter storm. It's uh, two o'clock on Saturday. Appreciate uh, y'all joining us this afternoon once again. I'm sure there's already a bunch of fatigue setting in just prepping for this uh, this very complex system. But uh, see if we can continue to kind of narrow things down for you uh, over the next 12 hours or so. So I think it goes without saying a major winter storm uh, will impact parts of North Georgia beginning tonight. We feel very confident, obviously, in our uh, warnings and advisories right now. I'll show you here that in just a second. Um, it's a very complex situation with regard to precipitation type and duration and exactly where things are going to set up still. Um, so I want to stress that whatever we're talking about right now at 2 o'clock here on Saturday, a lot of things could change, you know, later on this evening, overnight, and into the early morning hours tomorrow. So. I know many of you know that already. Just wanted to uh, remind you that uh, this is just you know what we're seeing, and we are feeling more confident about you know the event itself. But as far as fine tuning, like the exact locations and amounts and things like that, it's been very, very, very hard to do. So <clears throat> basically, the main points are you know the highest of uh, uh, um, the highest snow totals we are expecting across far northeast Georgia in higher elevations where we could see four to as much as eight and even more inches of snow. We also have the freezing rain threat with a quarter to a half inch of ice across portions of Northeast and East Central Georgia. I'll show you all these maps here in just a second. Now, obviously with Metro Atlanta being such a high population center, we are expecting impacts anywhere from a trace to uh, two inches of snow. And again, that's probably gonna be more from like Southwest Metro being le lesser amounts to the Northeast side of Metro where we're going to see potentially higher snow uh, and or ice amounts. So um, uh, the other thing I want to stress is the wind. Uh, this is a very dynamic, uh, intense storm system, um, similar to what we saw around New Year's uh, Eve that weekend, New Year's Day, with respect to, uh, we talk about this pressure gradient force that can really enhance winds across the area. Um, we are looking at a, maybe a six to nine hour window we could, where we could see some very, very strong winds uh, especially over like exposed areas, higher elevations. Um, so we have a current, we have a wind advisory out already for much of the area on top of the winter highlights. Um, but we are looking at uh, upgrading this to a high wind warning. Uh, we don't issue these very often. Um, this is a situation where we will be looking at areas along the I-85 corridor from like LaGrange all the way up to Gainesville and the higher elevations where there could be a high war wind warning in effect um, for a portion of uh, late tonight through the day, or at least through the morning hours tomorrow. So be prepared for that. Um, I know the focus has been on the, you know, how much snow or ice and when and all that, but the wind is definitely going to be a problem. Um, and that can really, uh, really result in um, some widespread power out outages. Um, generally, if you're from Columbus to Macon, um, you know, Sandersville, that area and south, we don't expect major impacts to affect you guys, at least no, no uh, winter effects uh, to affect you guys, but we could see some definitely gusty winds, maybe a brief changeover to rain, uh, from rain to snow before ending later this evening, but we don't expect any accumulation down south. All right. <clears throat> so here's our latest uh, winter storm watches, uh, or not watches, warnings and advisories. Um, the blue that you see in Northeast Alabama um, is from the Huntsville forecast area, but looking at our area, um, we have a winter weather advisory basically along uh, and north of I-20 and uh, winter storm warning uh, for parts of uh, northwest and north central northeast Georgia. And I know you might see like those of you in, um, you know, Whitfield, Murray County, um, even Catoosa County, maybe wondering why you're not at a warning. Um, we don't think the those snow amounts are going to be as as high as what we could see over like parts of Lookout Mountain and Dade and Walker, uh, Walker County, and especially over across the Northeast uh, mountains of Georgia. However, we'll look at this and if we need, we feel the need that we, you know, the snow amounts could be a little higher than what we're seeing right now, then those counties in between like Trenton and uh, Fannin and Gilmer County uh, could get upgraded to a warning. But at this point, um, you're under a winter weather advisory for basically up to two inch, one to two inches of snow uh, in the gusty winds in that area, uh, Whitfield, Murray, uh, Catoosa, uh, County there. So anyway, that's the latest, um, again, this is what we're looking at right now, um, for the winter side of, of highlights, but things, um, as things kind of evolve through the evening hours, we might be 
adjusting this just a little bit. And as soon as we do, we'll try to let everybody know ahead of time. <clears throat> okay, this is a this is a winter storm impacts graphic we put together. Um, I know that there's the winter storm severity index as well. We, we just wanted to draw a little bit more attention to um, the impacts that we could see um, and how intense and how major they could be with respect um, to the snow and or ice amounts and the wind. So we're kind of factoring all that in. Uh, much of North Georgia is really going to be um, sort of like under the scope for potentially major to even extreme impacts from this event. Again, I mentioned earlier, this is a very, very strong storm system. And with the heavy snow amounts, plus some of the significant ice accumulations that we can see on top of the potential uh, winds being anywhere from 30 to 50 mile per hour gust at times later on tonight through the day tomorrow, um, we're really gonna be dealing with some problems um, you know, across much of the area, especially north of I-20. So. Um, this kind of, if you're in the moderate to minor impacts, this is mainly, uh, um, I don't want you to kind of let your guard down in the in Atlanta metro area. Uh, even though we might be seeing lesser amounts of snow and or ice, um, the wind could still be a, a big problem on top of, 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 what, of the precipitation. So um, please, you know, we, we just, this is sort of our best look, taking everything into consideration of where we expect the highest impacts uh, to be. But if you're in that, you know, yellow area, don't think like, oh, it's not going to be that bad because it might be not as widespread, but localized areas within that I-20 area and across Metro Atlanta could be, could see some pretty significant uh, impacts, whether it's the ice accumulation, the snow coming in later in the day tomorrow, um, or the winds. So um, we'll, um, again, we'll fine tune this uh, through the day and through the night tonight if we need to adjust some things. But we hope that this sort of paints the picture of what we are anticipating as far as far as impacts go with this event. So looking at the latest uh, conditions as the storm is starting to evolve and come together, finally, <laughs> um, around this is a water vapor satellite imagery, kind of looking at the upper levels of the atmosphere with respect to moisture, um, where the drier air is, you can see in the orange uh, areas. You can see that the, the upper level system is really wrapping up across um, Oklahoma and Texas right now. And uh, that's the system as it, as it digs south and east across uh, the Arklatex and across the lower Mississippi River Valley later on today into tonight. That low is going to track right, pretty much right across uh, North Georgia later on tomorrow into tomorrow night. And it's that upper low that's really going to be the driving force for the, you know, the heavier snow, the ice, and the really intense winds that we could see. So um, basically, as, as, as this upper low moves across the area, the, cold, the air mass is going to be cold enough to, to support pretty much snow um, for all areas that are seeing any, any kind of precipitation. So that's really where the coldest air is as it, as it moves across. It's going to be later on in the day into the evening hours. But um, there's also some, we've seen some lightning strikes uh, across parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi. And as dynamic as the system is, we could see some what we call elevated thunderstorms where um, Basically, we have the lightning, uh, a little bit of thunder, and, and the, the precipitation could be really, really intense at times. So if you're seeing rain, freezing rain, sleet, or snow, if you uh, see any lightning or hear thunder um, sometime later tonight through the day tomorrow, don't be surprised if that does happen. And, and there can be some pretty intense uh, rain, freezing rain, and or snow uh, rates with these, uh, with these heavier bands that set up. <clears throat> All right, so the latest, uh, looking at the temperatures and the dew points right now, or at least the, within the last couple of hours, generally we're in, uh, across North Georgia, we're sitting in the mid to upper 30s, ranging to the mid 40s down across the I-20 corridor. Um, we don't expect the, we do expect a little bit of warming uh, through the rest of the afternoon, but we have a pretty good, um, you know, veil of like mid and high level cloudiness that's sort of keeping temperatures from uh, coming up too much. So. Kind of where we're at right now is where we're probably going to be for a high temperature the rest of the day, and then things will slowly start to uh, cool off pretty, um, pretty good later on this evening and into the overnight hours. Now on the right uh, is the dew point. So this is what we were talking about, the wedge, the, uh, the cooler, drier air coming down the east side of the Appalachians out of North Carolina and South Carolina is really what's going to sort of set the stage for potential ice and freezing rain. Right now with those dew points in the mid to upper 20s, that is a really good indication that as precipitation moves in later on this evening and through the overnight hours, um, it may start off as like a, a rain, snow, sleet mix. 
um, especially across the higher elevations, but it could transition pretty quick, quickly to freezing rain as that cold low level um, air gets kind of trapped beneath the warmer air that's coming in over the top of that low pressure system. Um, so it's a very, again, it's a very complex, you know, situation, but the, looking at this and, and seeing how the wedge, looking at dew points is there, um, things will be, uh, the, the stage is becoming set for uh, an area of, of pretty significant freezing rain or ice that could develop along the I-85 corridor uh, later on tonight and through the morning hours tomorrow. Talked about the winds already, but I wanted to stress this again. Um, looking at the latest models coming in a bit stronger this morning, we expect widespread like 20 to 30 mile per hour winds sustained beginning sometime late tonight. So it'll be after midnight through the morning hours tomorrow is where we think that window for strongest winds is going to be. Uh, once that upper level low that I showed you on the water vapor map, um, once that moves across the area, winds will come down a little bit, but then on the backside, they could pick back up again, but we're not expecting the 40 to 50 mile per hour gust that we could see out ahead of it later on tonight and through the morning hours tomorrow. So again, a combination of the precipitation and the wind um, really paints the unfortunate picture of seeing um, a lot of downed trees and power lines, which could result in some widespread power, power outages later tonight and through the day tomorrow. <clears throat> Quick look at uh, sort of the onset, the earliest onset uh, of when the wintry precipitation could begin. Uh, I know this is a, a little bit noisy, but we think that it's going to be earliest in the north central northeast mountains where any precipitation that starts to fall later on this evening um, and through the overnight hours is going to quickly become a wintry mix, um, pretty much going to be a snow sleet and then maybe changing over to a little bit of freezing rain and then back to snow before ending. But this is sort of like at onset. Um, this is not a window of when you're going to see winter weather um, because it could expand beyond these time frames. But we want to just give you a little bit of an idea of where we think things are going to kind of set up later on this evening um, and then kind of spread to the south and west uh, through the night and into the morning hours tomorrow. So um, here's a quick look at a, an ensemble uh, model look at precipitation type um, where we kind of think, and it's a pretty good, it gives a really good representation of what we think is going to happen uh, over the next, um, you know, 12 to 24 hours. But basically this is about midnight, around midnight tonight, the light precipitation starts to move in from the west. We start to see that changeover pretty quickly to snow or kind of a mix of wintry precipitation across the higher elevations of northeast Georgia. By four o'clock in the morning, four to five o'clock in the morning, notice the wintry precip definitely starts to expand uh, to the south and west. Um, the blue is snow. The purple area is kind of a mix of sleet, freezing rain or snow. Fast forward again uh, to about seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and we're, gonna, we're starting to see areas of uh, orange or red, which would indicate freezing rain. So this is where from about seven to around 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, um, where we really start to see that freezing rain potential develop across parts of the area. And this is because we've got that shallow cold air below freezing near the surface, but just above that um, is where we see that quote unquote warm nose of low level air uh, that's gonna be kind of punching and pulling into the system. Um, and as that happens, that's when things could change from like snow to sleet um, to freezing rain uh, or rain for that matter, just depending on how warm the surface temperatures are. Um, so this is kind of a look at what, what we expect to happen through the morning hours. It's not going to be exact, but just want to give you an idea. And then by, by midday, early afternoon, you start to see the upper low with the colder air aloft come in and change a lot of that mixed precipitation, even rain over to all snow. And this is where folks in, that are in Dade, Walker, Catoosa, Chattooga County could see um, their bout of heavier snow on the backside of this system. Um, late tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours. And then eventually uh, things will start to sort of lighten up and diminish um, by later in the day into the evening. But um, again, we could see snow flurries or some light snow showers as far south as like LaGrange, Griffin area, Peachtree City. But we really, really aren't expecting a whole lot of accumulation out of this south of I-20. It's mostly gonna be um, more of the significant accumulations are gonna be north of, uh, of I-20 at this point. Here's the latest ice accumulations that we're looking at. Again, subject to change, but we definitely see a corridor of anywhere from a tenth to a quarter of an inch. In some areas may see isolated higher amounts above a quarter of an inch. Um, anywhere uh, from 
the Gainesville area on up into Dawson County, uh, parts of Forsyth County and Northern Gwinnett. And if we start to see these amounts materialize a little bit, if you're in Forsyth County, Northern Gwinnett, um, we may look, be looking at some of these counties being upgraded uh, to a winter storm warning or even an ice storm warning. Right now, we haven't pulled the trigger on that. You're still under a winter weather advisory, but be prepared if you're kind of in that Forsyth County, Northern Gwinnett, Barrow County, Clark, uh, Maconey, um, that, that, air, that zone, we're really gonna have to watch because those are just outside the winter storm warning right now. Um, so for if we start to see some potential amounts going above a quarter of inch of an inch of ice, uh, that would definitely help us sort of upgrade from a winter weather advisory to either an ice storm warning or a winter storm warning. Here are the snow amounts. Um, again, the highest amounts over north central, northeast Georgia for sure. Um, and also uh, parts of the higher elevations of northwest Georgia where we could see anywhere from two to four inches up there. Um, most of the area uh, outside of that will see anywhere from one to two inches of snow. Uh, Metro Atlanta, anywhere from, you know, just a dusting up to two inches, just depending on where you are. Southwest to sort of northeast across the, uh, uh, the metro area. And then anywhere for points uh, south of I-20, you might see a quick dusting, but I don't think it's really, we don't really think it's going to materialize into very much. Um, but if you do get a, a, a burst of heavy snow later on tomorrow, uh, into tomorrow evening, that might, you know, dust the grass up for uh, a little while, but it shouldn't amount to uh, any significant impacts at this time. Temperatures, uh, we do expect uh, temperatures tonight to be at or below freezing, basically from, uh, you know, the I-20 area, uh, west side of Metro, north side, east side even, and then on up to the north and east is where the temperatures will be a little bit colder in that wedge zone where temperatures could fall into the upper 20s uh, by daybreak tomorrow morning. So again, parts of like Hall, Gwinnett County, north and east, that's where we think temperatures will be in that 28 to 30 degree range by morning. So whether you're seeing snow, sleet or freezing rain, it's going to be problematic given those, uh, those air temperatures. Highs tomorrow, um, again, this is conservative. We may be a little bit cooler in spots, especially from Atlanta, north and east. Basically, east of I-75, north of I-20, these temperatures may be uh, a little bit warm, but for now, we're thinking low to mid-30s, and then there's a pocket, again, north um, Gainesville, and then on up toward uh, Winder, and then north toward Blairsville, will probably will not be above freezing at all uh, tomorrow. And then as the system kicks out tomorrow night, um, the temperatures are really going to drop off across the entire, pretty much the entire area. Um, we'll see sub-freezing temperatures just about everywhere, uh, with the exception of the far uh, southern and eastern part of our forecast area where um, you'll be in the lower to mid 30s uh, by daybreak on Monday morning. And then finally on Monday, um, we do expect a little bit of a warm up. Um, things kind of get out, clouds just start to decrease just a little bit, especially across um, you know parts of Atlanta and then south of I-20. Um, the problem areas across North Georgia, far North Georgia, you may be in the cloud cover uh, a little bit longer into Monday and the temperatures could be um, a little bit colder um, compared to some of the other areas. And also these temperatures will be also dependent on how much uh, snow is actually on the ground. And if there is a good you know, coverage of snow, these temperatures will probably be pulled down a, a little bit more than what we're showing right now. Once again, I just wanted to reinforce the potential for um, you know, very strong wind gusts coming in very late tonight after about three o'clock in the morning through about noon tomorrow is where we think this window of very intense wind gusts could actually occur and we are debating and, and more than likely we'll be upgrading parts of the area from a wind advisory to a high wind warning um, for during, for that time period late tonight into the morning hours tomorrow. So again, unfortunately, on top of what we uh, could potentially see uh, with the wintry precipitation, the winds are definitely going to become uh, a very significant problem uh, throughout the day tomorrow. And again, this is our, these are basically the impacts of what we expect from north to south across the area. Uh, definitely the farther north you get from I-20, um, the impacts are going to be pretty significant. Um, where we'll definitely be looking at some problem areas um, throughout the day tomorrow. Again, in summary, this, uh, this is a major winter storm developing for parts of the area, especially in North Georgia. Um, impacts will start beginning uh, sometime tonight. Uh, especially after midnight and continuing basically all the way through the day tomorrow and into the evening and overnight hours on Sunday, um, especially as the temperatures start to drop off pretty good um, tomorrow night. Um, mixed bag of precipitation, um, 
really, especially from, from Northeast Georgia, expanding to the South and West during the morning hours tomorrow, and then sort of transitioning over to uh, all snow for much of North Georgia um, during the afternoon hours and evening tomorrow before things, at least precipitation comes to an end from West to East across the area uh, later tomorrow into tomorrow evening. Uh, don't forget about the winds. We just talked about that. And uh, again, any existing uh, winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, wind advisories, um, any changes we make to what we have out there right now um, will be coming probably in the next couple of hours. And then we will make sure everybody is obviously aware of that um, when those changes do, do occur. We're not planning any additional formal briefings at this time because we're really going to start to get into, you know, uh, weather warning mode, um, you know, later on this evening into the overnight hours. Um, and again, as things are changing, um, we'll try to uh, keep everybody up to date in chat uh, via email. We might even do some quick video updates to share with everybody on our YouTube channel. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew we're not planning any formal briefing after this one this afternoon. So um, with that, 